This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you all for coming this evening to the monthly public lecture of the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. It's good to see all of you here tonight. There, obviously, we have a very popular speaker. And even in this rainy weather, I really appreciate all of your coming. Now, since 1990, the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii has been following our mission of promoting human health, animal rights, and protection of the environment by means of vegetarian education as we've grown to become one of the largest nonprofit vegetarian societies in the nation. We'd like to encourage you, those of you who are not yet members, and even those of you who are not yet vegetarians, to join the Vegetarian Society tonight. You'll receive an informative newsletter as well as discounts on Oahu, Maui, and Kauai at many vegetarian and vegan restaurants, businesses and groceries, and uh, vegetarian-friendly ones as well, such as at Down to Earth, All Vegetarian, Organic, and Natural. We are delighted tonight to announce a new VSH membership discount. This is Ayla Sarna, and we'd like to thank her very much. Uh, she is offering a new 10% discount to members on her Food for Life Hawaii classes. Ayla is a trained Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine instructor. Her upcoming classes will include topics such as Introduction to Food for Life and Nutrition, Cooking for Cancer Prevention and Survival, and Farm to Table, Farm Tour and Cooking Class with Food for Life Hawaii and Otsuji Farms. For more information, go to foodforlife.org or see Ayla before you leave tonight. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much, Ayla. <laughs> Now I'd like to go on and say that as a VSH member, you might also enjoy our VSH Imagine a Vegan World support group meeting. We have them every Tuesday, except this one of course, from 6.30 to 7.30 at the Central YMCA. Terry Bear, where are you? There she is, stand up. She's wearing her Imagine a Vegan World t-shirt. So for more details, just go and see Terry tonight. We also would like you to stay tonight and enjoy some really tasty vegan foods that have been donated by the generosity of Down to Earth. We're recording tonight's presentation for broadcast on the VSH TV series, Vegetarian, which appears on public access channels across the state, including on Oahu's Olelo Channel 55 on Wednesday mornings at 11 a.m. and on some Thursdays at 6 p.m. You, you can also view videos of this and many of our past presentations on our website, www.vsh.org, where you'll find many other resources, including our famous dining guide. It's now time for our special guest. We're very happy tonight to have with us Dr. Terry Shintani, MD, JD, MPH, and KSJ. Dr. Shintani is a Harvard-trained nutritionist and physician. He currently serves as the assistant chair of the department of Complementary and Alternative Medicine at the University of Hawaii's John A. Burns School of Medicine. He is on the American College of Lifestyle Medicine and is the author of a number of well-known books including The Hawaii Diet, Eat More, Way Less Diet, and The Good Carbohydrate Revolution. His program won the highest national award from the U.S. Secretary of Health and he has been featured in Newsweek, CNN News, CBS This Morning, Dateline NBC, and in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Along with his work with his patients to transform their health through a wholesome plant-based diet, he hosts with Dr. Diane Nomura and Dr. Ruth Heydrich the weekly Healing and Dew radio program and has worked on many other issues including water rights for local taro farmers. For his significant contributions, Dr. Shintani has been designated a living treasure of Hawaii. 
This evening, he will present the Seven Step Health Makeover, Lose Weight and Reduce Your Need for Medication. Please welcome Dr. Terry Shintani. I want to thank you all. Boy, this is a very nice crowd this evening. Thank you for spending this rainy evening with us uh, tonight. I want to talk tonight about a health makeover. And part of the reason I talk about health is we have a broken health care system. How many of you agree with that? All right. You see how many hands go up? Isn't it amazing? We all know it, but how come the government doesn't seem to know it? How come the medical field doesn't seem to know it? How come the insurance companies don't seem to know it? They keep going along their merry way with a pharmaceutical-centered approach to medicine when we all know, I mean, at least all of us in this room, it doesn't really work very well. And the reason I get into this, and the reason I said health makeover is because when we talk about uh, our health care system, how many agree with this? We don't really have a health care system, do we? We have a disease care system. How many agree with that? Right? You, you see how many hands go up? It's just about everybody. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is when you go to the doctor and the doctor tries to get you to be healthy. Do you know how much the, med the health insurance company pays the doctor to get you to eat right and exercise? Do you know what they pay? Virtually nothing. Do you know what they pay if they, you go in there and five minutes and they prescribe a medicine that says kick you out of your office and see you next week? Well, then they'll pay for an office visit, right? But to keep you healthy, they won't pay because, well, you're not sick enough. It's terrible. Then if they let you get sick enough that you need surgery, then they'll pay big money, tens of thousands, maybe $100,000 when you need surgery. Why do you think our healthcare system is going broke? It is broken, as you all realized uh, before you came here. I'm a professor at the medical school. I'm the associate chair of alter complementary and alternative medicine. And the reason I'm there is I'm hoping that I can plant a few seeds to change the way medicine is practiced. Because I had a very uncomfortable situation when I was a medical student. As you all know, I was a lawyer first. I got fed up with the way law was practiced. So I decided to leave the law profession. I got, you know, you know I passed the bar exam, I got my license, and then I immediately I may have been the only person studying for the bar exam and the, and the MCAT, the entrance exam for med school at the same time because I already knew I didn't like the way law was practiced. So I get into medicine and I wanted to learn how to heal people. How many of you think doctors should learn how to heal people? Well, that's a silly question, isn't it? But here's my experience, okay? First three years, we learn all this stuff, book learning and seeing patients in the hospital and sleepless nights and these ex exams and going on call uh, at the hospital. And in the fourth year, we start to see real patients and we have a preceptor. It's like a mentor. And so here I am sitting in a clinic and I have my preceptor. He's like a one-on-one -on -one teacher showing us how to practice medicine. And the patient walks in and I see the patient with the doctor and they call us student doctors because in a little while we'll be MDs. And we look at the labs and the blood sugar is high and cholesterol is high and blood pressure is high. And the doctor says, okay, we gotta give him this medicine, this medicine, that medicine. And then he leaves the room so that I can finish counseling the patient. So I learn, right? That's how we learn. So I'm telling the patient, you got to take this once a day, you should take this one with food, this one before bedtime, and so forth. And the patient asked me a very fair question. He says, Doc, when will these medicines cure me? Isn't that a fair question? 
How many think that's a fair question to ask? See, everybody thinks that's a fair question. And you know what my answer had to be? Never. The answer almost stuck in my throat. Never. You have to be on the medicine the rest of your life. How many of you have heard that from a doctor? It's like everybody hears that. Well, that may be fine for the drug companies. you be on, stuck on medicine for the rest of your life. But did I learn how to heal that patient? Heck no. I started thinking, hey, wait a minute. I spent all these years and I didn't learn how to heal the patient. Something is very, very wrong. You all know I was a lawyer first, right? I thought it was malpractice. <laughs> think about it. I have a diabetic patient. How many of you think diabetes is fundamentally a nutrition-related disease? Well, duh, right? Your blood sugar is out of whack, right? And did they teach us about nutrition, the cause of the disease? The National Academy of Sciences says medical schools should be providing at least somewhere around 26 hours of nutrition education. Do you know what the real number of hours uh, most medical students get? The surveys vary, but the reality is, I've heard from other reports, that it's about three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. If you go to a doctor and ask them about nutrition, about the only thing they know is kind of parroting what they say on a tear-off sheet from the American Heart Association, and that's about it. Do you know what I'm saying? So I said, I can't practice this way. So after medical school, I went and got a nutrition degree. You know what's really sad? I was interviewed once for being a doctor and a lawyer because that was unusual. Do you know what's even more rare than a doctor lawyer? A doctor nutritionist. Oh my God. At the time I was interviewed, there were eight doctor lawyers in the state. Do you know how many doctor nutritionists there are in the state? There was only one. It's shocking when you consider that two-thirds of us die of a nutrition-related disease. Don't you think two-thirds of the doctors ought to be nutrition doctors? That would make sense, wouldn't it? But the problem is insurance companies will not support that. So that's why I do what I do. Because our healthcare system is badly broken. I'm gonna show you some statistics about how broken it is and what you can do about it. Today's talk is about the seven step health makeover. I'm going to talk about how to lose weight, get off medication in the new year. How many of you made a New Year's resolution? Well, at least some of you. Do you know what the number one resolution is? It's lose weight and get healthy. Uh, by the way, I'm, this is my disclosure. I have a nonprofit called the Hawaii Health Foundation. 100% of the royalties from my book go into the nonprofit to promote health in Hawaii. Anyway, the most popular New Year's resolutions, uh, this is 2010. Number one is lose weight back in 2010. Far and away the most important. This year, eat healthy and exercise, basically the same thing. Far and away the most popular New Year's resolution. So I think that may be why this room is full tonight, uh, because people want to get their health back in order. Well, here's one of the reasons why I think losing weight and getting healthy is so popular or so important. You see, this is 1985, the obesity rate. This is the best data in the world. This is from the CDC. You can go on their website and get these slides. It's shocking. This is how obesity is going in this country. 85, now the darker the blue, the more the obesity. When they run out of dark blue, they get out, of, you know, they go to yellow and orange and red. 86, 87, 88. It's an epidemic sweeping across the country. 95, 96, 97. It doesn't stop. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Now, let me tell you why this is of great concern. The population is aging, right? And do you all know what comes along with obesity? Diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, high cholesterol arthritis, low back pain, I can go on and on, breast cancer, colon cancer, on and on, prostate cancer. As much as I like the fact that we have our Hawaii boy being president of the United States, 
I don't think Obamacare is going to work. You know? Do you know why I say that? Because I think they're barking up the wrong tree. They spent all this effort on creating a better health care system. What they really needed was better health. How many agree with that? Right? Do you, know, do you know what I'm saying? See, because what they did was they figured out how to pay all these drug companies more and more to put out more drugs. And how they they're going to require people to have insurance and require companies to pay for it. And they're just expanding the current system, which is already broken. Instead, if they had real health, then the current system is fine. Why? Because if you got healthier and healthier, then you would use less and less health care services, less and less medication, less and less surgery, and then the current system would be fine. And then we'd have money left over to take care of the aged, blind, disabled, and people who can't fend for themselves. But that's the, stat. that's the state of how things are today. Six million kids are overweight. This is back in 2000. By 2005, it was 9 million, and I would guess that by 2010, it's more like 12 million. Why do I put this up here? Well, now we're finding kids with type 2 diabetes, adult diabetes, 16 years old. That, we never used to see that in the old days. And they say this may be the first generation who outlives their children because children are so sick. Here's the top 10 leading cause of death, heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, Alzheimer's, etc. They're all in red. They're all nutrition related. Two thirds of us, if you add it up, die of these nutrition or lifestyle related disease. In recent years, they found a new, startling, almost shocking fourth leading cause of death. It kind of sneaked in here in between the third and the fourth cause of death. What do you think, all, what do you all think that is? Well, it surprised everybody because it really wasn't a disease. What killed these people? It was the treatment for the disease that was killing people. The Journal of the American Medical Association acknowledged that prescription medications, not abused drugs like heroin and crack cocaine and so forth, normally correctly prescribed medications, legally prescribed medications, are now the fourth leading cause of death. They call them ADRs, adverse drug reactions. Do you know what that means? All the more our current system is broken. For a lot of people, the treatment is now worse than the disease. Do you know what I'm saying by that? Right? And you know what I started thinking? I'm being facetious, of course, but See, diabetes is sixth leading cause of death, right? What's the primary treatment for diabetes? Do you all know? Well, the first thing to do is give you a pill, right? Right? Think about it. Why would you give somebody the fourth leading cause of death to deal with the sixth leading cause of death? <laughs> Think about it. Doesn't it kind of like, wait a minute, something is not making sense here. Well, the truth is it hasn't made sense for quite a long time. I mean, I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm being facetious about it because medications are useful and necessary because it prevents damage. But do you see how ridiculous it's getting? The current medical system is reaching its limit. It's hitting the wall. It's causing more and more damage with less and less benefit. And at some point, we have to change that. Otherwise, we will never solve this problem. Here again, sulfonylureas, one of the most common medications for diabetes, increase the risk of heart disease, a study finds. There's study after study that comes up like this. And, and why does this cause it? Well, sulfonylureas increase secretion of insulin. High insulin causes metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome causes increase in risk of heart attacks. It's really unfortunate that they try to fix one thing and they make something else worse. So why is America getting fat and sick? Well, some people think it's all in the genes. How many think it's all in the genes? Well, I, there are people who think that. Uh, well, here's an interesting finding. Uh, Native Hawaiians have double the rate of obesity of Caucasian Americans and African Americans. 
And some people think it's genetic because when I worked in Waianae, I used to have patients that were 300 pounds, 400 pounds, 500 pounds, 600 pounds, 700 pounds. I recently gave a talk in Japan and I said my biggest patient was 400 kilos. And they said, to correct me, don't you mean 400 pounds? I said, no, it was 890 pounds, 400 kilos. So people then automatically think Hawaiians are genetically overweight, right? But if it was all in the genes, then why is it that, you know, 200 years ago, 250 years ago, when the genes were pure, you didn't see any obesity? This is Captain Cook's artist. These are pictures from the 1800s. You don't see obesity among Native Hawaiians. If you're all in the genes, these are pure genes, they should be even more overweight, right? But obviously something else is going on. And I reasoned that, this is why I did research on, in, in this area, is I reasoned that if you could figure out why the population who was most likely to get obese stayed slim, then you could deal with that for anybody. Because if you can, if you can deal with obesity in the most difficult population, then you should be easier to deal with it in everyone else. Well, one of the foods they ate was taro, was their main staple. Taro is mostly carbohydrate. How many of you heard carbs make you fat? Well, if carbs make you fat, then how come people eating a 78% carbohydrate diet, which is what the Hawaiians used to eat, stay slim, right? Why is it the slimmest populations on Earth eat the most carbohydrates? The Chinese, the Japanese, the Thai, the Filipinos, they move to Hawaii, they eat less carb, more meat, more fat, and then boom, they start getting, you know what I'm talking about. You ever see a tourist from Japan or China? They're skinny, you can tell the locals from the, right, <laughs> from the Japan National, the China, right? Right, you can tell the locals are a little more plump, I should say. Well, carbs have been the main food for humans throughout history, all around the world. But the difference was they were not processed carbs. And that's where people make the mistake. People think, ah, well, they're eating too much carbohydrate and getting fat. What they don't realize is processed carbs and whole unprocessed carbs have completely opposite effects in the body. And if we have time, I'll go over that. But in ancient times, we used to eat very little fat, very few processed foods, mostly whole unprocessed carbohydrates, and very little animal product. Today, we eat way more fat, way more sugar, way more white flour, and no longer consume whole unprocessed carbs. And for the native Hawaiians, they used to eat taro. What's the main staple for Hawaiians today? <laughs> French fries. Hmm. You all know the answer to this if you're local. Anybody guess what the... Bread? Did somebody say spam back there? Well, this is not my slide. Somebody wrote a cartoon showing that the Hawaiian staple food was Spam. You know what I'm talking about, right? Spam, spam musubi is at every 7-Eleven you can think of, right? Spam sandwiches were what I used to eat when I was a little kid. You know that Hawaii is the largest per capita consumer of Spam in the entire universe, right? <laughs> You know that, right? Right. That's why they have, uh, what, spam contests in Hawaii. I doubt that they'd have that anywhere else in the country. Well, we can learn a little lesson from the bees, not the birds and the bees, but here is a bee. They put a little pink dot to identify this different bee. This bee lives a long time and is very fertile. These live a short time, they're smaller, What's the difference between these two bees? It's a queen. Do you know that they're genetically the same? The workers and the queens? Do you know what I'm saying? Think about it. They're genetically the same. What happened that made the queen different? They fed it a different diet. 
No, it's really a profound thing. They fed it a different diet. And it's a new area called epigenetics. You are what you eat diet even affects the expression of your genes. And that may be why Hawaiians today can reach, at least some of them, 800 pounds. And in the old days, they stayed slim. Because suddenly, the spam and foods like that turned on the wrong genes. This is what humans have looked over, the, over time. You can see <laughs> a change in how humans look. But America is afflicted with diseases because of this change. All of these diseases, obesity, heart disease, hypertension, stroke, diabetes, arthritis, prostate, allergy, asthma, and so forth. Do you know what the treatment for these is if you go to the doctor? Do you know what the doctor will treat you? Pills, right? Do you know all of these are nutrition-related diseases? What they should be doing is treating you with a change in diet or lifestyle. But we're not set up to do that, and that's a problem. You see, when you, have, when you look at ancient foods, you can see they're very colorful, full of life and nutrition. This is modern foods, right? And I'll bet some of you ate this stuff today, right? You know, burger and fries, so such a common thing to eat. And yet, you have to realize that all these foods are processed and the nutrition is taken out of them, leaving just the calories. And what's happened is, when we eat this way, we start having health problems. So what do we do to change? I recommend seven steps. I re recommend a whole person approach, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. At this time, it's a good time to make a commitment. You have to decide you want to make a change. You know what Einstein said, right? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If you don't change something in your diet, you're just going to have the same result. So you have to make a commitment and set some goals. Next, it would be really good to find your reason for making a change. Well, everyone has a different reason for changing. And by the way, not everyone is ready to change. Right? Most people have to start suffering a little. Like they start getting diabetic neuropathy and the pain in their feet is intolerable. Then they start worrying about their health. Or they get a scare, they get a heart attack, wind up in the hospital, and all of a sudden they realize they might be closer to death than they had ever hoped. But finding your reason is important because you have to stay motivated. It's not easy to stay healthy in a toxic environment where every corner, you know, when I was a kid, I can remember when there were five fast food places on this island. How many remember that time? You know, there was Scotty's, there was, I don't know when Chunky showed up. See, I'm showing my age, right? They had Minor Bird by Wailai. They had Thunderbird by Kalihi. You know, right? Five on the whole island. Now there's five on every corner. Right? You turn the corner and you got Jack in a Box there, Burger King there, Kentucky Chicken there. And you go a few more blocks and there's another one. You know, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut. How many of you want to stay healthy to see your children or grandchildren grow up? You see? Some people like that. How many of you just can't stand taking your medicine anymore and want to get rid of those? You see, you see what I'm saying? People have different reasons, but they're not all that different. We're all the same. We want to be healthy. We want to feel good. We want to enjoy life. We want to enjoy our families and so forth. Eat more to weigh less. I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a little bit. How many of you would like to get he healthy by eating less? How many like that idea? <laughs> How many of you would rather eat more food and weigh, weigh less? You see? So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to eat twice as much food and still lose weight. How many of you would like to learn how to eat twice as much and still lose weight? Of course, exercise. Do you know what the best exercise is? Walking. The best exercise is the one that you will do regularly. 
whatever it is, whatever you enjoy doing, just make sure you do it. Write it down, think it, see it. You know, um, there was a study done uh, about diets, and there was one thing, there were two groups, they gave them the same diet advice, same exercise advice, they changed one thing, and one group lost twice as much weight. Do you know what that was? Simple thing. Write down everything you read. Absolutely right. You must have read the study. Yeah? Double the effect when you write down what you eat. So it's good to have repetition to remind yourself. And join a support system. Get a coach. So if you really want to change, you can join our 10-day program. There's a fee for it, so I'm not going to talk much about it. But later on, you can leave your name if you're interested in our 10-day program, uh, which we hold about five times a year. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to eat more to weigh less. How many want to learn how to eat twice as much and still lose weight? You see, even the guy in the back who is nodding off is woken up. These are actual jars that I used to show in Waianae when I used to teach nutrition. This is poi, brown rice, sugar, and fat. What is similar about the food in these jars? Same amount of calories. This is a very smart group. 200, 200, uh-oh, 200, 200. Did it ever occur to you that the amount of food changed that much when you processed it into just plain sugar and plain fat? It, it's, it surprised me when I weighed this out. This is a key to how I got Native Hawaiians, who were very large, to lose weight while eating as much as they wanted. Hey, here's two plates. How many of you could eat this plate in one sitting? Well, that should be everybody, right? I mean, I'm not saying if you would or do. I'm just saying if you could. And if you're vegetarian, imagine that's a garden burger. You could eat that, right? How many could eat this in one sitting? Well, there's always one or two wise guys who say that. You, but really, it's very hard. It's four pounds of food. It's very difficult to, to fit four pounds of food in your stomach all at once. Okay, let's just say, let's, wouldn't, you, wouldn't we all agree about that? Which one will make you full? This will make you full. How many of you will be hungry after eating this? Yeah, a lot of you would. You'd want, you know, apple pie or maybe another fish sandwich or something like that, right? Most of you couldn't even finish this, okay? What is similar about this plate and this plate? Same calories, very good. This is a very bright audience, but you are all wrong. This is fewer calories. <laughs> this is 1,100 versus about 1,200. And I told you I would show you how to eat twice as much. I lied, this is three times as much. I just showed you how to eat three times as much food and still wind up with fewer calories. Which one is gonna make you feel satisfied and able to continue? Of course, this side, right? because you eat it, your stomach is full. This one, you'll have hunger pangs half the day. Another example. Here's an apple and a muffin. It's a sizable muffin because I had to make it the same size as the apple. Apple is 90 calories. How many of you could eat two apples if you're hungry? That should be just about everybody, right? How many of you could eat two muffins if you're hungry? Yeah, most of you could, right? This is 90 calories. How many calories do you think is in the muffin. 300? Do I have 350? Do I have 400? 500? The answer is 550 calories. It shocks most people. It was shocking to me when I read the label, but it did come right off the label. I'm not making this up. Okay, now think about it. If you were to eat apples, how many would it take to equal 550 calories? The answer is, well, six times 90 is 540, right? Six apples. Those of you who could eat two muffins, how many of you could eat 12 apples? You see, no takers, right? But this is a profound lesson. This is a lesson that we learned with the Waianae diet, the Hawaii diet, why Native Hawaiians could stay slim on a high-carb diet in ancient times. Because they ate poi, right? It takes eight pounds of poi to provide a day's worth of calories. How in the world, even if it's a high carb diet, are they going to get enough calories to gain weight if they're eating poi and taro? And the other answer is they won't do it. And you know what's even more profound? When you don't process food, most foods are like that. 
nature won't let you get fat. If you're trying to get fat eating apples, I'm sorry, you won't succeed because you can't eat 12 apples. Do you know how much food 1,100 calories is? Well, if you remember carefully, this is 1,100 calories. Two muffins. You see, the trouble today is people eat two muffins and then go home and eat dinner because their stomach is still empty. You know what I'm talking about, right? They'll go to Starbucks for an afternoon snack, eat a lot, drink a latte, a couple of muffins, and go home and eat dinner. Or go to a fast food place and eat a burger because their stomach's still empty. And then they wind up eating 4,000 calories and gaining weight. What is the one mistake that most people make that keeps them sick besides eating the wrong food? The myth that pills make you healthy. I'm going back to this because they say that somewhere around 90% of the people over 60 are on some prescription medication. It's a horrific figure, 90%. What does that mean? Most of us are sick. And you know what they, you know what they do? You go to the doctor, and I, I see this all the time. Patient comes in to me, and I say, okay, how's your health? Oh, it's great. My sugar is good, my cholesterol is good, my pressure is 125 over 80. How many medicines you're on? Oh, nine? <laughs> is that person healthy? No, your numbers get better, but you're still sick. And people think, oh, but I follow the doctor's instructions. I'm healthy, right? No, you've got to realize that you're not. In fact, the truth is, if you're on medication, by definition, you're still sick. And that's why I'm saying we don't have a health care system. We have a sick care system. Well, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Why is what we do important? Because health isn't everything, but everything else is nothing without health. How many agree with that? Right? You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you're a billionaire. If you had a stroke, you can't lose half your body, and you can't use a toilet by yourself anymore, what kind of life is that? Right? A lot of people make the mistake of not investing in their own health. It's tragic all the time. I hear people with lots of money, but they won't invest in, you know, their health club or health program or, you know, exercise, you know, because they're putting money in their 401k or they're putting money, spending money on their financial advisor. You know, the truth is your most important financial asset is not your house. It's not your 401k or your stocks. Do you know what your most important financial asset is. Do you know what it is? It's your health. And how do I know that? I'm not making this up. It's the number one cause of bankruptcy. The number one cause of bankruptcy is not bad financial advice. It's bad health advice or bad health practices. Okay, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, people are stashing money away and they're miserly about their own health and they buy junk food because they're trying to save money and they're wrecking their health, or they have a program and they don't want to spend money in a program, you're making a mistake, financially making a mistake. More than half of bankruptcies are due to bad health. I flunked my nutrition test. I thought the four food groups were canned, frozen, light, and instant. <laughs> you have to educate yourself. People are confused about food. What we do is we take people away from all this processed food and we move them back to whole unprocessed food. And this gentleman lost 150 pounds and com completely off insulin. Uh, one woman in our program lost nearly half her weight over a two year period. And this video should play. When I started the program, I weighed 243 pounds. Currently, I weigh about 128. I'm kind of going in between the 125 and the 130. The other thing too, the other day I thought, I think now my outside matches my inside. You know, now I look like how I feel on the inside. And that was kind of neat. So, um, yeah, my cholesterol used to be 223. Now, two, almost two years later on the program, it's 131. Um, my blood sugar was a little elevated when we started, not much. It was just at about 100. I don't know what it is now. It was like 94. Yeah. I feel really good. If somebody were to ask me if they should do this program, I would tell them, yes, you should do this program. I would recommend this, definitely recommend this. And it's, it's, 
If you don't make it really complicated, if you just follow it, it's really not hard either. All right, so if you can change your cholesterol from 223 to 131, why would you want to take cholesterol medicine first, right? Do you know what the side effects of cholesterol medicine is? I'm going to say this fancy term that you don't need to remember. Cholesterol is an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. You don't need to remember that, but there's this word CoA in there. It's coenzyme A, which is similar to coenzyme Q. It blocks coenzyme Q, which if it blocks coenzyme Q, it means you can't produce energy in your cells. When you can't produce energy in your cells, the two kinds of tissues that use energy, muscle and brain, are limited. What about the brain? The brain uses energy second only to muscles. And what happens? Well, when you get older, memory loss. How many would want to control their cholesterol and get memory loss? I don't think anybody really wants that, right? Average weight loss in our program is 11 pounds in about three weeks, and people continue to lose. Published study shows people ate more food but started eating fewer calories. I just kept on eating and eating, and I was never hungry. I've never, never felt deprived. I eat a lot of food. <laughs> My original weight loss was 45 pounds, 37 pounds so far. I've lost 52 pounds. I've lost 56 pounds, and I've kept it off for seven years. All right, so these are people who are saying they feel full because they're eating food that fills up their stomach. And so it's much easier to stick with it over a long period of time. We published our results. By the way, most doctors you see who write nutrition books don't have published results. We published ours in a peer-reviewed literature uh, uh, journal. Most of them don't have long-term follow-up. We have seven and a half year follow-up, which shows that our retention rate is better than virtually all the programs in this country. Heart disease, high cholesterol, high heart disease, high cholesterol di between different countries, high heart disease, high fat diet, high cholesterol. I gave a lecture at a hospital there were doctors and nurses in the room. Don't you think doctors and nurses ought to know where cholesterol comes from, right? It's the number one cause of death in this country, right? Cholesterol-related disease is the number one, number three, right? Heart attack and stroke. What is one simple rule you can use to find cholesterol in the diet? One simple rule. Anybody? Not one doctor, not one nurse knew the answer to this. Don't you think they ought to know, right? Don't you think we ought to know? Animal products. Anything with a face on it has cholesterol in it. Chicken has a face, it lays an egg, it's got cholesterol. Pig has a face, it's got cholesterol. So somebody says, well, what about clams? All right, anything with a mother, you know. <laughs> you see, beef, chicken, pork, fish, all have cholesterol. You know, some people say, ah, I joined the Vegetarian Society and now I eat just cheese. And that's not the greatest answer. You see, plants, potatoes, apples, beans, corn, rice, all zero. There's no cholesterol in plants. It's important to reduce saturated fat, trans fat, total fat, reduce your weight, reduce processed carbs, exercise. And when they do our program, they get all of these things together. And this is what happens. I never went away from the meal feeling hungry or deprived. And that was one of the problems that I've had with diets in the past. I always had to eat a lot less food and I always seemed to be hungry, but not on Dr. Shintani's diet. When I first started this thing, my cholesterol level was about 235, something like that. And it went down 100 points in three weeks. I'm telling you, I was astounded. Um, I've been trying to get that cholesterol down for years and years. It's never been that low. And all of a sudden, here it is, and all I did was change the way I eat, do a little bit more exercise, and basically do what Dr. Shintani said to do. And it works, and it worked fast, and that was incredible. All right, so again, if you can lower your cholesterol 100 points in three weeks, why would you want to take a medication that saps your energy, right? Hypertension, 
Blood pressure is another problem that increases the risk of heart disease and stroke, etc. Control cholesterol, blood sugar, believe it or not, high blood sugar contributes to hypertension if it wasn't bad enough uh, because it holds on to water like sodium does and other reasons. Um, insulin actually will cause contraction of the blood vessels. Uh, reducing sodium, reducing stress, exercise. In our, in our program, I'm going to show a video of a 73-year-old to show you that it, it's not too late to change things. I've lost 52 pounds. I didn't have to take blood pressure medicine anymore. I just hate to take medicine. And it was such a relief not to have to take that medicine. My, my blood pressure stays normal. Now what about diabetes? Uh, a lot of people think high carb diets cause diabetes. How many of you think high carbs cause diabetes? Well, you would think so, right? Because when you eat carbs, your blood sugar shoots up. Do you know that the countries that consume the most carbs have the least amount of diabetes? And again, it has a lot to do with the fact that most of the countries that eat a lot of carbs are not eating highly processed carbs. Okay, they're not eating the sugar and the white flour. They're eating maybe white rice, but it's not ground up into fine particles, okay? Japan, high carb diet, low rate of diabetes. They moved to Hawaii, lower carb, 300% rise in diabetes. They moved to Washington, 400% rise in diabetes. Also, high fat diets will start to block the action of insulin. It seems to increase insulin resistance. Just remember, if you're going to try to get off insulin and blood pressure medicine, you've got to do that under physician supervision. I'm not saying you should do this and just take yourself off. You've, you've got to be careful. In our program on day two or day three, they start feeling lightheaded. And somebody said, what, is your diet dangerous? And I said, no. People get well so fast that their medication becomes dangerous. I mean, it could drop their sugar or blood pressure so low that they could pass out. In Norway, during the war, the Axis powers took all the animals away from the people and fed them to their own soldiers. Norway was occupied by Germany. Fat intake dropped. And you know what? It saved lives. Heart disease dropped. When the war ended, they started eating animals and fat again. Fat intake went up. Heart disease went up. And it didn't matter. Even if you were 80 years plus, you saw that change. Again, never too late to start. I just ate six Happy Meals and I'm still depressed. You know, just because it's labeled happy or whatever doesn't mean it's good. You know, we have to fight all this great labeling that you see. But I show this slide because I wanted to show you that it's not just blood pressure, blood sugar, all these other things. There, there are other things that are not measurable that I can't publish because it's hard to uh, track. But GERD, GERD is gastroesophageal reflux disease, you know, heartburn. You know, you take Prilosec or Tagamet or those kind of things. <coughs> Headaches, arthritis, fatigue. Those also disappear when you start eating right. And there are many people on medications for arthritis and headaches and et, et cetera. So I'm going to show you a short four-minute video. As a nation, we're addicted to drugs, and I mean prescription drugs. And I mean it's like how damaging being addicted to a narcotic is to an individual. This nation being addicted to prescription drugs is wrecking the nation. Tagamet. Depo-Provera. Nubitor. Mandian. Metformin. Vicodin. I eat Tums like to tap. 1,800 milligrams of Motrin. Avaline. I ask for alternatives to pills, and every time I go in, I get another pill. Javik. Captopril. I'm going to have to be taking it forever. My doctor said I'm pre-diabetic. No, I, I would get migraines every single day. I had a lot of lower back pain. I had night sweats. Extreme urinary frequency. Immediate family. I'm the only one alive. 
There's got to be something better than this. I have diabetes and all those things that kill Hawaiian. Uh, I believe it's going to be my last effort here. There are many people taking a lot of medicines that they could get rid of if they were following a good diet and lifestyle the way we recommend. Some people say, boy, your diet is dangerous. A diet makes people well so fast that their medication becomes dangerous. Oh, ouch. Yeah, skip it. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you should probably skip it. Skip it? Okay. That's so surprising. I can't yeah. believe it. Being that it's on the low side of normal, you probably don't need your diabetes medicine. I'm so excited. Oh, why are you why are you I excited? Lost 10 pounds. Oh. I lost 14. I've already lost uh, 11 pounds. So that means you lost over 17 uh, Your blood sugar is borderline, you know, yeah. well, actually slightly high, 107. Yeah. Now it's 90. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I had such a problem with reflux. Practically from the first day, it's been better. I have an unopened box of Prilosec. Solus. 228. Mm -hmm. And uh, after 21 days, it's 141. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes. Joint pain? Oh, ankle, knees, hips. Okay, and so? And since I've been off the dairy and off the meat products, nothing. Your headaches? Yeah, they're gone. Okay. I don't have program. any more headaches. <laughs> So, but don't you think that's a better way to practice medicine, where we start getting people well enough so we can start getting them off their medication, right? But anyway, just remember that health isn't everything, but everything else is nothing without health. Remember the seven-step health makeover commitment, find your reasons, eat more to weigh less, exercise regularly, write it down, prayer, join a support system. And just realize you shouldn't be spending more on wealth advice than on health advice because the leading cause of bankruptcy is bad health. And don't ever think that pills make you healthy. All right, that's it. Thank you. Okay, all right, a couple of questions. The book has a lot of, some people are able to do it by using the book, but the program, of course, I have cooking teachers and we actually serve 15 out of the 30 meals in the 10 days and there's a lot more education that goes on and then there's a support system that's why I am saying the group and and you have me as a as kind of a coach and when it comes to getting a coach you know I tell people don't ever be embarrassed about getting a coach the best people in the world have a coach Tiger Woods has a coach for years was the best golfer in the world the question is has Medicaid ever paid for this the answer is no the medical system has never paid for what I do, so I have to do programs. Yeah, quick. Is it cha possible to m change or mutate a gene? Not that I know of, but you can change expression of which genes are expressed. That's the lesson of the queen bees. Yeah. Had another question back here? The question is, what is my opinion on plant oils, uh, such as olive oil? We did a study. I recommend a quite a low-fat diet, 10-15% or so. 
And the reason is, I did a study comparing the diet that I recommend, which is quite low in fat, with a Mediterranean diet, which is high in olive oil. And people said, olive oil lowers cholesterol. And when we did it, people on the Mediterranean diet lowered their cholesterol. But we had another group go on my program, and it lowered it even more. And then, the true test was, then we switched. The group on the olive oil, the Mediterranean diet, went on my diet, and their cholesterol went further down. The people who were starting on my diet went on a Mediterranean diet, high olive oil, and the cholesterol went up. It's exactly as I predicted. So even plant oils make cholesterol go up. Now, if you're going to eat any oil, probably extra virgin olive is maybe the best one to use. But I don't recommend processed oils much at all. If you're going to get oils, you should get it from whole food, avocados, nuts, seeds, and that kind of thing, and in small amounts, not in huge amounts. I want to thank you all. I, I would like to, if you don't mind, close with a prayer to acknowledge the spiritual side of health. Thank you, everyone. Aloha. Thank you very much, Dr. Shin Terry Shintani, for a talk that's going to help us all get a better start on the new year, and for some of us, hopefully, a healthier and happier life. We'd now like to invite all of you to enjoy some delicious vegan refreshments courtesy of Down to Earth. Mahalo to all of you for coming and have a safe return home. Good night. This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org.